Hello, parents, carers and students of Year 10. And welcome to our virtual Year 10 information evening. We're sorry it's come out a bit later than advertised, as you, as you can imagine. The world of education is fairly fluid at the moment and we had been waiting for updates on examinations and syllabuses and we have decided to go ahead now and wait for the updates which we'll share with you in due course. Firstly though I wanted to say well done and thank you for sending your amazing children to our school. We're so proud of the youngsters and how they've coped and adapted to the changes that have been made to our school and the new rules and the new regulations. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with them. Um, so thank you in the first instance. <clears throat> We've changed our school organisation radically. We have organised the school into five separate bubbles. The main reason for the bubbles is so that if there are in the future infections, we don't have to shut the whole school. And students that need to self-isolate can go home in smaller numbers. So the students are in their own bubbles for teaching and they stay in their own social zone at breaks and lunch times. And it is working very effectively at the moment. And again, that's due to the cooperation of our wonderful students. Year 10 are based in and around the humanities corridor. So they do all their teaching down there, mainly. They GCSE practicals are going ahead, so the students can keep up with their exam work. And then they have the use of the two courtyards and the canteen at break and lunch time. So there's an indoor and an outdoor space. As I said, that again is working well due to the cooperation of the students. The other changes that we've made uh, in terms of safety features is that we are asking students to wear face coverings. The students have been really good at understanding that whilst young people tend to be less vulnerable to COVID, older people can be very vulnerable. Of course, we have adults within the school who are in the vulnerable and extremely vulnerable categories. And we have some adults in the school who are quite old. And Therefore, we've got to look after them. And the students have really understood that and they understand that some of our community have people at home who are vulnerable and they wear their face coverings to and from lessons and on the way in from playground. Um, yeah, we have to make the odd reminder, but they've been absolutely brilliant about it and they've done really well with that. We also ask them to sanitise their hands on the way in to school and the way into lessons. So we have put a lot of sanitizers on the outside of the school building so they can be used on the way in and we've got hand sanitizer outside every single classroom and we are asking them to remember to sanitize their hands as they go into classrooms as they go into the school and staff remind them and then again they've done remarkably well with this too in terms of social distancing in the bubbles the students there's no, there's no requirement for them to socially distance However, we are asking the students to always stay at least two metres apart from adults. And that's the control measure in terms of the bubbles, in terms of the adults. So again, students have been great at doing that too. Of course, there have been changes in the morning. So we have a staggered start and we ask year 10 to come for 9 a.m. Again, not too early, please, and definitely not late. And we can get the timing about right. We get a really nice flow along Dale Avenue and into the school. We're trying to avoid congestion at the bottom of the drive, but we're also trying to help out uh, the community by keeping the far side pavement opposite the school free of our students, so that mainly parents taking their youngsters to windmills can get along without fighting their way through lots and lots of our students. But again, because our students are so cooperative, that has gone really well too, and that's been reflected and recognised by members of the community that I speak to when I'm standing in Dale Avenue too. In terms of GCSEs, this year, we're still not exactly sure what's happening. So for the year 11, still a little bit uncertain. We don't know when the exams are going to take place, but we think that the government are committed to them 
at the moment. There have been some changes to GCSE syllabi, uh, not as many as we thought. Uh, and obviously that's because of the amount of time that the students spent out of school last term, last year. Now, in terms of year 10, year 10 have had a tricky time. They missed half of their year nine. And in year, year nine, we do tend to do some preparation for GCSE. But we're confident that the students haven't missed any of their curriculum. The way we set up our remote learning was that we sent out our lessons on the day and we sent them out by email. And as we went through lockdown, we were asking our teachers to do more and more recorded lessons with teacher explanation. So you would have seen that as a parent, with more of these lessons coming through. And we're confident that we covered the whole curriculum. Now, there may well be some youngsters who, for no fault of their own, because of the lockdown, have got behind. But we're working very hard to find out where the gaps are. So what are we doing this term? In, basically, we are teaching. We are going to teach the children in lessons, and we're going to catch up. So in terms of uh, precedent, this has not really happened with students missing large chunk of their, chunks of their learning, really since the Second World War. But in Christchurch in New Zealand, some years ago, there was an earthquake where, and students did miss quite a lot of time out of school. Studies since then have shown that the students were able to catch up remarkably quickly with the help and skill of their teachers, where teachers are focusing on what needs to be done to enable the students to plug the gaps. So that's what we've got our teachers doing. They're all very skillful. They diagnose where the gaps are, they diagnose weaknesses, and they're that they're teaching to make sure that students not only catch up, but continue to make fantastic progress. So I'm really confident with this year group. Not only are they a brilliant bunch of young people, not only do they have superb support from home, but they also are being taught by an exceptional group of teachers who are supported by a brilliant bunch of support staff. So I realise there'll be lots of questions um, and I know that you'll get lots of information from this group of videos. Um, I encourage you to contact the school if you want to find out anything more. So thank you and enjoy information evening. Hello there, my name is Rob Davis and I'm Deputy Head of Downlands with responsibility for the curriculum. Firstly, um, can I apologise for the fact that we had to cancel our planned Year 10 information evening. Uh, hopefully you understand under the circumstances. As such, what I'm hoping this video and some of the accompanying information uh, can give you some idea of curriculum provision for Year 10 children at this challenging time. As you'll be aware, each year group is taught in a separate bubble in specific areas of the school. Despite this, students still have full access to pastoral support, focusing on their well-being. The movement to teaching in year group area bubbles has meant that the curriculum in some subjects has had to be adapted, whilst in others it remains as planned. Please be aware the full curriculum is being offered, it just might be being delivered in a slightly different way or in a slightly different order. What we've tried to do in compiling this video is give you a flavour of some of the things that have changed and some of the things that have stayed the same. And rather than I bore you any further, I've asked some of my colleagues to update you on specifics in their subject areas. Take care and many thanks for your support. Welcome to the Year 10 Bubble. Um, this is the Humanities block at Downlands Community School. Um, so Year 10, um, their bubble for the foreseeable future is uh, the, the, the Humanities block starting from, uh, we've got two courtyards which are for the exclusive use of year 10, year 10 at break times and lunch times. We have half the canteen. We have uh, a dedicated pastoral support office um, are on site within the, in the humanities block where myself and Miss Bardi look after all the social, emotional um, aspects of learning and to support the learning of our, of our young people in the year group. Hello, my name is Samantha Kashmiri and I'm an assistant head teacher with responsibility for English. Year 10 is obviously a very important year where students will be continuing with their GCSE studies. They will have done aspects of the GCSE course in year nine, but now we're carrying on with the literature syllabus. For literature, they will study A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. They will also be studying Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. 15 poems by a range of authors ranging from the Victorian era to the present date. 
and they will also have um, a component which tests their ability to read a poem that they've never seen before. And that will be their literature GCSE. Many of the skills that they practice for one text will be transferable to another text. We're also adopting the faster read approach with many of the texts that we're teaching so that as we, we don't necessarily stop as we start reading it, we'll be reading it in full for about three weeks and then come back to do the analysis. And we found that's worked really, really well because it allows pupils to get an overarching idea about what the text is. We're no longer doing Jekyll and Hyde. Some of you might have been aware that we used to teach Jekyll and Hyde, but we've since changed that and replaced it with A Christmas Carol. The GCSE language paper remains the same. So there are two papers that your child will sit. Both of them mirror each other. In both paper one and paper two, there is a writing component. So they will be given 45 minutes to either write a story or write a speech or an article. In paper one, where they write a story, there will be a reading section where they will be given a text, um, which again, it's unlikely that they've ever seen before, and there will be four questions that they have to answer. They're not straightforward comprehension questions. They're questions which get them to look at how the writers use language and analyse structure, and that is pretty much mirrored on paper two. It's a fast and furious exam, and it does mean that those pupils who read a lot and like reading will often find reference points within that paper a little bit easier. But throughout the whole literature GCSE and the language GCSE, we teach lots of strategies and lots of processes because it's, it's about learning how to answer the questions and understanding what the examiner is looking for. I would really like to push that you try and encourage your child to read for 20 to 30 minutes every day so that you increase your reading speed because if you are a slow reader, reader it can be a, a barrier to progress. So reading little and often makes a big difference. And finally, there is the spoken language component. It is an endorsement. Um, your child will get a pass, a merit or a distinction. It doesn't affect your child's GCSE whatsoever but it does contribute and inform their understanding of the language paper. And they will have to write a speech and they will have to deliver it to a teacher or a small group and answer questions on their chosen topic. But we don't usually start that until Year 11. Hello there, I'm Miss Chalmers, Head of Maths. There's not too many changes happening in maths, which is great. Just the main change this year is that we used to do skill checks once a week in lessons. And in order to gain back that time, we're now having them out of lessons and um, our pupils will be doing them at home. So this means that once a fortnight they will get a skill check homework and there's videos on how to do each skill and that can be found on SharePoint on the maths folder. Thank you. Hi, I'm Claire Davis, Assistant Head Teacher in Charge of Science. I just wanted to update you on a few changes we've made this term because of the present situation. The three areas that we've made changes on are we've taken on a few more platforms. This lets us know areas that students um, need to put more emphasis on um, and we can then focus their react on that. We're also doing um, our first proper assessment since we've been back um, on paper where children will be given more information in class about this. And the third adjustment that we've had to do is, of course, we haven't been doing practicals. Now, that doesn't concern us just right now, because at the moment we are doing the theory topics where we can. If there is a practical, we're either trying to demo it or we're doing it as a department and videoing ourselves and then showing that to the students. And then the idea is that when it comes to um, back to normal, we will then cover those practicals. So I hope that makes you feel reassured and any questions, just email me. Thank you. This message is for um, Year 10 Computer Science GCSE students and Year 10 iMedia students. And the good news is that virtually nothing has changed for you compared to how things would be normally. We're in computer rooms for every lesson, we're using the computers for every lesson, so actually we've no change from what we would consider to be normal and your teaching and learning will be the same as if we weren't under our COVID restrictions. The good news is if you should have to self-isolate, we can you can continue studying by logging into um, Office 365 at home. So it's all good for us. 
PE um, has had to make some fairly substantial changes, particularly with practical activities. Currently we are working on a curriculum um, that, um, to the best of our ability, uh, promotes social distancing, um, limited contact. We are having to ensure that, again, there are activities where it's easy to clean equipment, um, focus on that, that hygiene. So the, the curriculum has adapted to an extent, but it's a varied curriculum. Um, there's lots of changes with the activities to ensure that uh, the students are very much interested, um, and that's worked quite well. GCSE dance is exactly the same course um, except at the moment we're not using any contact work um, so no lifting, no touching um, until kind of further notice from the government. I'm Andy Corcoran, Head of Geography. I'm just going to talk to you briefly about the changes to the Year 10 fieldwork. Normally the Year 10s would undertake a piece of fieldwork outside of the school site on a day trip, uh, usually to Seven Sisters, um, but if the um, changes that we're currently going through at the moment stay in place, we will have to do a virtual field trip from the classroom or a very localised one on the school site. Hello parents, my name is Amanda Reid and I'm the Joint Head of Food and Child Development at Downlands along with my colleague Fiona Skelton. Um, I'm here just to give you a little bit of information about how we are running food preparation and nutrition at GCSE under the present Covid restrictions. All students are still able to engage in practical lessons and they are having these practical lessons in our purpose-built food rooms. Their other lessons however, their theory lessons, may well take place in another area of the school. At the moment all of our students are given a breakdown of every lesson coming up until half term so that they know exactly when they have a practical lesson and they know if they, uh, they are required to bring in any ingredients. At the moment we are supplying all of the uh, perishable ingredients because students are not able to access the fridges. However, after half term this will stop and we'll expect our students to bring in all of their ingredients and we will collect them at the beginning of the day in their bubble or from their bubbles and we will then take them and put them over in the refrigerators. Hello, my name is Miss Moss and I'm Head of Creative Arts. Your son or daughter has chosen GCSE Art, which is fantastic. They've already made a really good start to Component 1. Component 1 is made up of three projects, which they've started now and will work on until December 2021. And that's worth 60% of their final grade. That includes homework, so homework is really important that they keep up to date with that. And in Year 10, it's due in every Wednesday. We always put that in EduLink. Uh, once they finish their 60% coursework portfolio, pupils will be working on the externally set assignment, which is basically a question from the exam board, which they have 12 weeks to complete, and then a 10-hour exam in the art rooms to do that. And that is basically the course. Any questions, please email me at jmoss at downlands.org. Year 10 GCSE music um, is more or less carrying on the same as it would have done previously. We are not doing as much performing in class as we can do because of obviously keeping areas that um, COVID safe. We are carrying on with working towards a music theory exam. This is what we do every year of year 10s and they'll sit their music theory exam, associate board music theory exam on the 10th of November and then alongside that we are starting the GCSE course looking at area study one. Um, this is what we normally do as well and, and once we got the, uh, the the main chunk of area study one started then we'll be starting to look at composing um, with, a, with a focus on um, composing melody um, and then um, progressing from there in, in towards Christmas. Hi I'm Simon Hudson and I'm the acting head of the theatre department here at Dowland School. So with the year 10s this year uh, we are carrying on as much as possible as normal. They're in their group bubbles so we're working. Uh, a first term for a year 10 student, the GCSE is made up of 60% of the work has practical work in it. So what we start in this first term is I give them a whole series of workshops on acting techniques. We start with Stanislavski, we look at circles of concentration, where do you need to focus when you're working. We look at lab and energy, how do I move in a space. We look at things like seeing the movie and imagination, how do you actually see the images in the text. We look at voice, we look at stage space, we look at stage design, we look at status. There's several workshops that I do on status. 
Am I a 1 or am I a 10? And we work at these practically and physically. Now, we're trying to keep our distance uh, as much as possible, but the techniques are really important. And they spend the whole term looking at those techniques. As an actor uh, and as a director and a teacher for 20 years, it's important that I give them those techniques that they can then use those in year 11. Then we move on to devising, and we look at devising skills, uh, and then we have some set text work in the summer. Uh, and this covers the basic three units that they'll do at GCSE in year 11, which is acting scripted work, devising work, and then analysing and exploring practically set text. So we're carrying on as normal. Hi, my name's Graham Oglin. Sorry we can't see you in person for this um, presentation tonight. I look forward to this every year. I want to take you through a few bits to do with year 10 and 11 and uh, help you with some of the aspects that will come your way, some of which you are well aware of, the exams and how they will loom large in um, just over 18 months' time. Other aspects, yes, how things will go at home when it gets a little bit stressful, as it may do. Um, we have something here you'll find amusing. Stage of adolescence, a normal phase of development which can be seen in toddlers but re-emerges in teenage years, where the teen can be especially self-centered, demanding, and able to tolerate things being different to how they want them. They can be difficult to live with and often have an inflated sense of their own importance. Maybe we've not come across that at all. Um, the teenage brain is one that is very able and uh, is very complex. The last bit of this, I think, is quite interesting. It, it means that the very smart adolescent do very, can do very stupid things in a very impulsive way. Another thing that perhaps we have seen at times at home. I want to give you uh, some guidance as where you may look up things should you be wanting a bit of advice. There are some books there that are quite useful and address the issues that you can face and challenges as parents and carers of teenagers. Um, there are, when dealing with the, the difficulties that you might have, there are three areas that to be mindful of. Your approach, your approach um, two issues that may arise at home. Please remember, uh, it's not you. Um, it can be very difficult to be on the receiving end of things and I think it is down to what you have done. It's not. It is the stage they are going through and in many ways it's a, an accolade to yourself because they wouldn't respond like that to somebody they don't know or are unsure about. So I'm afraid, yes, you're the nearest and dearest and are often on the receiving end. So, but the, um, the way of approaching that is to say, is to help them through it and get them to try to think about it themselves. Um, so hold back on answers and giving the thing, solutions yourself. Um, try and steer them, listen to them, try and steer them to take some responsibility for, for it themselves uh, and responsibility for coming up with a solution. If they can come up with a solution, then that is fantastic. And of course, they will feel empowered by doing so. Okay, you might tweak their ideas, of course. Um, but as I say, the outburst that might come along is not about you. Have a listen, try and then steer them to take the responsibility to creating their own solutions. As I say, that is a very empowering approach. As far as your communication, um, very much keep an aspirational communication on the table. Uh, that yes, it requires um, effort to get somewhere, but it's possible. It's a as a can do a can do approach. So conversations that talk about future careers and colleges and courses are all moving forward. And in that sense, they're all giving the the young person uh, a sort of hope or expectation that that's the route that they all follow. And with that, it keeps them on track. It keeps them thinking they can. They keep, it keeps them thinking that's the normal that they will work they will achieve, they will move on, and it, which indeed they, they will do, they will move on. So those sort of things keep talking about college, talking about um, apprenticeships and careers, it keeps them thinking forward as opposed to getting stuck in a the difficulty they might currently be facing. Okay. Obviously, as you know, the affirmations are great. If you catch them doing the good things and recognizing their talents, that 
helps bolster their self-esteem because at times through this these next two years their self-esteem will be challenged and they might doubt themselves and in doing so you know be very upset or emotional so as much as you can to keep bolstering that as you well know i'm sure i'm, I'm teaching granny and granddad to suck head, eggs here my apologies but just at times um they need that bit of extra some of the phrases we use can help and it's something certainly i spent some time uh working in a residential school for very challenging boys and the language we used was deliberately sort of constructed to try not to put pressure on them so in other words they could do things as opposed to they should or must it's like you could do this it, it's an empowering type of language that it means that the control is within their grasp as opposed to an imposition um, and then if when it's rather than saying why to something it's because and you're leading them to talk more you're leading them to probably work out their own solution as they get as opposed to again the why can be very challenging and uh, putting a lot of pressure on and then of course throughout this it's a it's a can-do attitude um, anytime you come across that word can't uh, we'll replace it and say well maybe you can it's really important. There are some support workers going in school. They're, these are the people that are working within each of the main departments, core workers that will support, support the students through their key stage four courses. And they're very experienced. They've all been with the school a number of years, know the courses inside out, and of course, know the difficulties that students will follow, will challenge, be challenged with. And I'm sure we'll, uh, well, I know that we'll be there alongside the students. They take the students out in small groups and individuals or pairs at times from their lessons to help them with aspects of the course that it might be, cha be challenged by or aspects in which the teachers said, could you just, you know, give that group a little bit more of an input? And that's their role. They will also come across this person, uh, the College Guidance and Work-Related Learning Coordinator. Miss Cutras will be having interviews with them, more so as we're in this term in year 11, but nevertheless helping them um, figure out where they would like to go and courses they might be interested in study and helping them put together the applications when we come to that time. So, of course, the children can come and check in with her at any time. She's a full-time member of staff on site. So she's a, an invaluable, absolutely invaluable source of information for them. We want them to be as confident as possible. And your support with of the school is fairly key in this. If you've got confidence in the school, and the school would be um, the, you know, the best place for them to advise in them, the best place for them to learn, they're in the best place to be, if you're confident in the school, that will rub off on them. So in that sense, supporting us and your support of us and the belief in the school is invaluable because, of course, if they think that you don't rate the school or what the school's doing, of course, you're their main role models. They are going to likewise think that the school doesn't know what they're doing. So your support is invaluable with that. And, and why wouldn't you? The attendance last year, uh, well, prior to the COVID, was 95.2% of all the school, which is fantastic. And this is key. This is key. 83% of all grades for leavers in year year 11. For the last two years, 84% or more above for level four or above, which enables them to go on to the courses they want to do. That's very high. And crucially, this is a fantastic stat we're proud of. 100% of students in college or in apprenticeships 100 percent and they're doing the courses that they want to do okay one or two of them might have not gone at the level uh, they originally had hoped for but we got them all in and so they're on the journey so that that's a very good reason they're very good reasons for you to think you have confidence in the school because if we can if we can deliver that that all your children will have decent grades and go on to the courses or apprenticeships they want. I think, you know, we're very proud of that and it's not a bad thing to be able to achieve, is it? Sign of the times, I'm a, these, I put these up here for you. Um, socially, there are, there's a lot out there, far more out there than I um, faced when I was coming through my teenage year. And 
just be mindful of this. I'd be I'd be negligent, I think, if I didn't bring it to your attention that there's a lot of stuff that children can access that we might not want them to access, and it's quite, quite readily available. And certainly if you're starting to see your children uh, have some of those aspects down below, mood swings, fair enough, yeah, well, you'll get mood swings, but it's where you get some of that other stuff there, and I think just be mindful of it. And, and if you're starting to notice aspects like that, have the conversation. Go, don't, don't hold back from it. Have the conversation. Again, in your, it, gen, probably gently as you go in first, unless, of course, you, you know, you're caught with something obvious that you really want to sort of ch challenge, but just open the door for the conversation and then try and move them on quickly. The, long, the more some of the, shall we say, negative habits get entrenched, the harder they are to move on from. So I'm afraid it is a sign of the times, but I really feel I have to bring it to your attention that it's very easy for them to get hold of things you might not want them to have in this day and age. A poem, I've read, I've read it many years uh, now in, at this meeting, but um, people have given me positive feedback back about it. So see what you think of this. I'd finger paint more and po point the finger less. I'd do less correcting and more connecting. I'd take my eyes off my watch and watch with my eyes. I would care to know less and know to care more. I'd take more hikes and fly more kites. I'd stop playing serious and seriously play. I'd run through more fields and gaze at more stars. I'd do more hugging and less tugging. I'd be firm less often and affirm much more. I'd build self-esteem first and a house later. I'd teach less about the love of power and more about the power of love. It is a crucial time for your children. It is a stressful time for your children and probably in the home as well. You'll still be there. You'll keep going with them. We'll keep working with them. And in no time at all, we'll be there. And they'll be getting their results and moving on. Thank you very much for um, listening to me and working your way through this PowerPoint.